281 in your hymnal 281 we have heard the joyful sound Jesus saves Jesus saves let's all stand together as we sing 281 on that verse together we have heard the joyful sound singing this morning and uh, ushers please help the lady find a seat would you that's the most important thing is helping people all right help her find a place to sit with those youngins okay no don't save any seats if anything's down just pick it up all right and uh thank you good sorry about that and uh wonderful all right good to see you here this morning and uh our 60th anniversary appreciate you coming and uh being part of our service today looking forward to what the lord has in store for us had a wonderful time last night and a great great time with barbecue and uh meeting some of the past members of bible baptist church and uh great singing by the richardsons and the hambies and good testimonies and uh it was just just fantastic i i could have kept on going but uh we there are a lot of tired folks here last night, and uh, but got rejuvenated through the night, amen, and uh, ready for a new day today, and thanks for being here to be a part of it. Let's pray together, shall we? Heavenly Father, thank you for today, and thank you for another beautiful morning you've blessed us with, and God, thank you for each one that's made their way here today for our service. Lord, thank you for your faithfulness to us at Bible Baptist Church for 60 years. And Lord, thank you that you're a God who never changes. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Lord, the song that they may have sang 60 years ago, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. We're thankful he's still in the saving business. And Lord, I, my prayer this morning is if any have come in the room today and they have never experienced the saving power of Jesus Christ, that they would experience that this morning. May you have your will and way in our service today. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. All right, you may be seated. To turn with me to number 283 in your hymnal 283 I have found his grace is all complete he supplieth every need joy unspeakable 283 on that first all together please I have found his grace is all
few announcements for you now. Listen carefully, if you would, and uh, we're going to have dinner after church today, all right? We got uh, plenty to eat, plenty to fo- plenty of food. Uh, we have some leftover barbecue from last night that's uh, going to be real good, and uh, it was good last night, amen? And uh, so we'll put that out today to help finish that up, and uh, then the other food that you brought in, and uh, there's some, uh, we got a cake. Uh-oh. I just remembered I was supposed to have someone pick a cake up. Uh, I'll have to send somebody down there to get our cake, all right? We want our cake and eat it too, amen? So, uh, someday this church will get a pastor and you'll go somewhere, but uh, until then, you'll, <laughs> you'll have to limp along with me, all right? And uh, wow, okay, so we'll, uh, we'll get that out there and... Um, We'll look forward to fellowshipping uh, after the service. You're all welcome to come. There's plenty, and uh, we've got plenty of room, so uh, we'll have tables inside and outside, and uh, we invite you to stay and enjoy the fellowship and enjoy the food with us after the service. We also have an anniversary mug that um, we want you to, to have. Uh, it's our 60th anniversary. It says 60th anniversary Bible Baptist Church, and we want to give that to you as you leave today. And uh, if you want to go out and put those in your car before you come in and go through the line, that's fine. Uh, just you'll, you'll have time to do that, I'm sure. And uh, well, we, we want you to have that as just a memento of our 60th anniversary. All right. And then uh, just a reminder for our schedule today: there's no 5:30 class. Uh, no Christian growth class, just our service at 6.30 tonight, okay? And I uh, hope you'll be back for the service this evening. We'll uh, uh, have some testimonies tonight of God's goodness to us, and uh, we'll share some things there, and of course we'll have the preaching of the Word of God. So we'll, we'll have a good time together this evening to kind of wrap up our 60th anniversary celebration uh, here for the weekend. But right now, I want to welcome our guests that are with us uh, in the service. We're always honored when people will visit with us in the service, and we want to recognize you today, find out who you are and where you're from. And so if you're visiting with us this morning, would you honor us just by standing for a moment, and uh, we could meet you and find out who you are and where you're from. Anybody here today? Duncan, go ahead and stand up for us, would you? Uh, this is Duncan and his son, Nick, if I remember right. And uh, he listens on the radio to the broadcast and uh, decided he'd come worship with us today at church. And Duncan, we're honored you'd be here today. Thank you, sir. And uh, appreciate you coming. All right. That's good. And uh, good to have the Ross group over here. Boy, that sounds real fancy, doesn't it? The Ross group. It sounds like a, sounds like a financial company or something, doesn't it? And uh, Warner, Warner has been saved and uh, he's getting baptized this morning. And so uh, everybody's here to see him take that step of obedience and uh that's great we have one right here yes ma'am courtney kennedy well fantastic courtney thanks for coming this morning that's great thank you for being here very good all right anyone else here this morning we can uh first time bro right down here okay brenda you gonna do them or they're gonna make them introduce themselves there you go All right, Zachary and Mary, good to have you today. Thank you. And <laughs> I remember Janice. Good to see you, Janice. Thank you for being here again. That's great. I oh, appreciate you coming to be here for our 60th anniversary. That's wonderful. Now, the ushers hand you a visitor's card, a welcome card there. If you'll be kind enough to fill that out, we sure would appreciate it. And a little bit, we have the offering. Just put that card in the plate, if you would, and keep the pen as our gift to you for coming today. We're glad you're here. Now let's give them all a warm welcome, shall we?
193 in your hymnal. 193, I traveled alone upon this lonesome way. Jesus and me. Now it's Jesus and me. On that first together, I traveled alone. While we sing this last, let's have the children go out to the children's church and let's sing that last together. Forever I'll sing of his great love for to me. Forever I'll sing. Turn over to 492. 492. Jesus Christ has made to me all I need. All I need. Let's all stand together. One more time as we sing. On that first. Jesus Christ is made to me all I need. All I need. He alone is all my plea. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests will come back and sing those last two together.
third together as you're finding your seats he's the treasure of my soul all I need all I need he hath cleansed and made me whole he is all I need on that third together he's the treasure of my soul Together we'll have the instruments drop out on the chorus. Glory, glory to the Lamb. All I need, all I need. Spirit sealed I am. He is all I need. Wisdom, righteousness, and power. Holiness is Amen. You can be seated. Great singing this morning. Wonderful. Ushers are coming. We'll get our offering today. And uh, those of you who filled out their guest welcome card, if you'll put that in the plate as it goes by, we sure would appreciate it. We'll have a record of your visit uh, with us this morning. All right. Let's pray and ask God's blessing on our offering today. Father, we thank you for the privilege to give. And Lord, thank you for how you've blessed us and prospered us and Lord, we simply give back to you uh, part of what you've given to us already. And Lord, we give cheerfully and we give happily this morning. And we pray you'll bless the offering to take care of the needs of your church. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like you to take your Bibles this morning for our scripture reading, <coughs> excuse me, to Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 4 if you would please, <coughs> we're going to read verses 31 through 37, verses 31 through 37 of Acts chapter 4. We read these verses responsibly, but begin together on 31, then I read 32, we're alternate reading, until we end together on verse 37 of Acts chapter 4. And as our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture. <clears throat> All of us standing to read together, let's begin on verse 31, ready? And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. 
and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them, and brought the prices of the things that were sold, and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is, being interpreted, the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, and brought the money, and laid it at the apostles' feet. And let's pray together, shall we? Father, add your blessing to the reading of the Scripture here this morning. Lord, we thank you already for the wonderful fellowship today and the good music and the songs of God we've enjoyed. And Lord, we're anticipating you speaking to us through your word this morning. And Father, we ask that you would give us the ability to focus and to listen carefully. Give us all ears to hear what the Spirit might say to us today. And Father, I pray you'll prepare our hearts that our heart would be good ground that the Word of God can fall into and bring forth fruit. And so, Lord, use the special to that end and prepare us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated.
wouldn't seem quite like anniversary Sunday if they didn't sing that song. I enjoy that. It's hard. It's hard for that not to become a trio. I want to jump up and sing with them. But that would surely ruin it, so I don't want to do that. But how many of you confess you sing along when they sing there? Yeah, I thought so. Wonderful. Thank you for that. Father, we thank you for another opportunity we have to open up your word and look at it together. And Spirit of God, I pray you'd help each individual as they listen today and help me as I bring this message uh, clear, give me clarity of mind and thought. Lord, help me to say what needs to be said and leave unsaid what doesn't need to be said. And Spirit of God, I pray that you would minister to people's hearts as only you can. And give us help today and encouragement and challenge from your word. And I pray if any in the room today has never come to faith in Jesus Christ as their Savior, they would come to know him as their Savior today. So Lord, may your will be done in these next few moments that we look into your inspired word. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. A lady in the church called a friend in another state and was pretty distressed about some families in her church who were fussing and fighting with each other and then she went on to tell the, her friend how the deacons were fighting with the pastor and the pastor was fighting with the deacons and people were just at odds with each other and arguing and she even felt like some people hated each other. They would sit on one side of the church and others on the other side of the church and the lady just sympathized with her and said, well, listen, just tell me the name of your church and I'll put it on a church prayer list. And she goes, oh, the name of our church is Harmony Baptist Church. Harmony ought to look better than that, don't you think? Harmony means this, a setting together, a closure of a seam, an agreement, or a concert. Now, I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about Harmony Baptist Church, <laughs> okay? And harmony in the church. You know, one of the, one of the great things about God is there, there is a harmony with His Word. I was reading, uh, Josh McDowell wrote a book, Answers to Tough Questions That Skeptics Ask About the Christian Faith. And in there he put this, lest anyone think this isn't something marvelous, talking about the Bible, We'd like to give you a challenge. Find ten people from your local area that have similar backgrounds, who speak the same language, and are all basically from the same culture. Then separate them and ask them to write an opinion, their opinion, on only one controversial subject, such as the meaning of life. And when they finish, compare the conclusions of the ten writers. Do they agree with each other? Probably not. But the Bible didn't just consist of ten authors. <clears throat> the Bible consisted of forty authors. And it wasn't just one generation, but it was over a period of 1,500 years. Not by people all with the same education, same culture, our same language, but differing educations, differing cultures, and from three different continents. And not just one subject, but hundreds of subjects. And there is complete unity and harmony in the Word of God. You say, how is that possible? Because we know there weren't just, that while there were 40 human authors, there was really only one author, and that was God Himself that holy men of old spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. But you see, as we look into the... If, if there's harmony like that in the Word of God, there ought to be harmony like that in the church of God. And the early church, as I said in our Sunday school class this morning, we have a pattern for the church. And it's not what, what a uh, marketing expert might tell us or someone who wants to tell us how to uh, market your church in the 21st century. But we do have a pattern that God has given us. And by the way, when we say market my church, I'm reminded it's not my church, and it's not really your church, it is God's church. And we don't have a right to do it our way, we have a right to do it His way. And we ought to do church the way God says to do church, and He gave us a manual to help us with that. 
And so he says there's going to be some harmony here, and I want us to look at some harmony uh, in that early church. And, and they had that, by the way, uh, in the early church here in the book of Acts. The Bible talks about them being with one accord in one place uh, as they prayed in the upper room. And then later on in the day of Pentecost, they were with one accord in one place as they, uh, the Holy Spirit came in power on that day. And, and if there's not harmony, listen, if there's not harmony in the church, it's not, don't blame the church. Okay? It's like, it's like me listening to Lisa play the piano, and then I come over and say, okay, let me, let me show you something. Well, what a lousy piano. No. If there's not harmony there, why am I blaming the piano? Is it the piano's fault? No, it's the guy hitting the key's fault. Because when she can sit down, it sounded pretty good. You see? It all depends. But, but isn't it interesting? When there's problems in a church or somebody knows there's fighting in a church, what do they do? Well, I'm not going back to church. They blame the piano instead of the people. These folks, uh, they, it's not the pianist's fault. If you play it correctly and you handle it properly, it'll make beautiful music. And if you learn what, uh, what, it ought to, what you ought to have in the church and how to get along with one another because the church is people, then you can have beautiful harmony in the church. And by the way, you can have beautiful harmony in your home. You can have beautiful harmony in your life. Let's look at some expressions of their harmony here in the early church. If you have your Bible open there to Acts chapter 4, I want to show you, first of all, verse number 31 says, When they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. By the way, that's the filling of the Holy Ghost I believe in. Where you get filled with the Holy Ghost and you speak the word of God with boldness. Oh, don't, don't tell me about your experience of uh, some ecstatic utterance, but you haven't given the gospel to anybody for weeks. I don't need that kind of experience. Give the Word of God to somebody. Now notice verse number 32. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. That's our first expression of, of harmony here in the church is they were, they, the multitude of them that, what's that next word? Believed. I'd underline that word or circle that word. They believed and they were of one heart and one soul. The expression of salvation. And salvation has everything to do with believing. It has nothing to do with what you do. It has everything to do with what's been done. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. When the eunuch was on his way uh, in the chariot and Philip preached Jesus to him from Isaiah 53 he said well here's some water why can't I get baptized and Philip said if thou believest with all thine heart thou mayest and he said I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God and so he stopped the chariot and he baptized him we uh, visited in Ross's home and talked to Warner a little bit that night and uh, mom was grilling him about whether he knew what he was doing and salvation and baptism. I'm sorry, that sounds rough, doesn't it? You were just, just questioning him, you know. But, uh, and, 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 and boy, he just he knew that Jesus was in his heart and Jesus had saved him and, and it was obedient to get baptized. And, and he, knows, uh, he knows, but listen, you don't get baptized to get baptized. You get baptized because you believed. Salvation is a matter of believing. Salvation is a matter of belief, not from the head, but from the heart. It's not just mentally knowing that Jesus died for your sins or died for the sins of the world. We tell the men at the prison, it's all the time, you can, you can believe Jesus died for the sins of the world, but you still die and go to hell. Because you're just believing a fact of history. Salvation in the Bible is when you believe that Christ died for my sins. And He suffered on the cross for me. That God commended His love toward me and that while I was yet a sinner, Christ died for me. And I will trust Him as my Savior. All oh, then you can receive the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's a belief of the heart. 
when you believe it in your heart, <coughs> it affects the way you live. Things that are a matter of the heart affect your behavior. Because what you believe affects how you live and determines how you live. And that, you say, what's that have to do with harmony in the church? It has everything to do. Because we're, we're all saved by grace. Grace is the undeserved favor of God. Grace is God's sufficiency for us. But wait, we're, we're, we're told in the Bible we're not just saved by grace. We are to live by grace. We're not just uh, didn't get saved by grace and now we live by our works. We still live by the grace of God. What does that mean? God's grace is His sufficiency, His ability for our inability. See, so it never is right for a Christian to say, oh, I just can't do that. I just can't get along with him. I just can't get along with her. No, 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 no. You're kind of, so you're, and by the way, you're probably right. You can. But that's where God comes in. And the grace of God gives you the ability where you don't have the ability. It'll give you the, the sufficiency where you're insufficient. And you're unable to do what you ought to do. And, and members of the church have to have grace operating in their life. And for grace to operate in our life means I have to be saved. I have to be a child of God. And have experienced His grace in salvation. Notice what verse 33 says. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Great grace was upon them all. You don't get, you know, someone said, what do you get when you put a hundred people in a room, everybody with a different opinion? And somebody said, a Baptist church. Well, that may be true. How do you get those people all to operate together? Grace. It's only by the grace of God. Hey, Jesus took study sometime the 12 men that He chose. Uh, differing men for sure. Different personalities, different backgrounds, different agendas. All of them. How did He mold those fellows together into a, a unit of men that would give their lives for Him? Grace. You've got to have the grace of God. And so I think... We don't all have the same testimony or experience or feelings or anything like that. But listen, we share a common expression of salvation. The way you become a member of a church is you have to be saved. You have to receive Christ as your Savior. And you follow Him in baptism. And then you belong to a body of believers. You belong to the church, which is His body. And so we have the expression of Salvation. If you've never had the expression of salvation, if you've never trusted in Jesus Christ as your Savior, I'll remind you, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. And if you think you'll get to the Father some other way, then we got a difficulty because you and Jesus disagree. And you ought to have serious thoughts about disagreeing with the Son of God. You can say, oh, that's narrow. But Jesus said, straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life. And few there be that find it. Why is it that few find their way to eternal life? Why is it that few will believe in Jesus? Because the pride of man doesn't want him to. There's no pride. Listen, if we work for our own salvation, we could all be proud of that. Look what I've done. Look what I've accomplished. But you know, there's no pride in saying, I'm a, I'm a dirty, rotten, stinking, filthy sinner. I can't save myself. I need salvation. I need a Savior. And in mercy, we call out to Jesus and say, Jesus, save me. Like someone drowning in the water and we can't do anything to save ourselves and we're going under for the third time. And finally we cry out, help me! And the lifeguard comes to help us. The lifeguard is Jesus. And He rescues us and He takes us safely to shore. It's the only way you get saved. Not by any works we do. It's all by what He's done for us. That's grace. We have that common expression of salvation. That's what binds us together. It's not, not your education. It's not the neighborhood you live in. 
It's not your economic status. It's the fact we all know Jesus. We put our faith in Him. We are believers. That's what the Bible calls us. We're believers. Believers in what? Believers in who? Jesus Christ. That's the bond. That's our expression. That's how we have harmony, even though we're all so different. Expression of salvation. The second thing I want you to notice with their harmony was the expression of giving. The expression of giving. Notice verse number 34. Neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. The second expression of their harmony here was the expression of giving. Someone says, boy, uh, those verses sound like communism. No, not at all. This was not mandatory. This was voluntary. This was not demanded by a law. This was, this was done by love. And they went over and above what the law would ever require. And, and, and here, these early Christians, you understand, many of them would be persecuted for their faith in Christ. Many of them would, would, would lost everything when they got saved. And so they, they, had, they had no family anymore. I remember recalling my college days, we had a Jewish fella who was in, in Bible college. And, and I recall him speaking about his family disowning him when he got saved, and, and especially then he got called to preach. And I, mean, I remember him telling me they had a funeral service. And when he would try to call home, he would say, Dad, this is Ed. And he said, I have no son named Dad. Ed, my son Ed is dead. Totally forsaken. Got, got no support, no money, no, not, not anything. Well, that was, not a, that was not unusual in these days. Cut off from the family. So that's why later on you find out if somebody had two coats, they gave one of them to somebody who didn't have any. Because they lost everything when they got saved. Boy, we don't pay a price like that. Most of us don't. And so they, they got a real spirit of giving. A real expression of, of giving and generosity. It's what sacrificial giving is really all about. And by the way, it's how God's work goes forward. God's work is always cared for by God's people. That's always been God's plan. And God takes care of His needs through His people. And I'm not, I'm not uh, you know, sometimes, oh, that pastor always talks about money. Try going to an Ohio State football game and see what they want to talk to you about. Hmm? Well, I'd like some tickets. Oh, they want money. Well, I just want to park my car. Oh, they want money. Well, can I get something to drink while I'm there? No, they want money. But I don't hear anybody saying, all oh, those Ohio State, all they talk about is money. Huh? No, but listen, I'm trying to get you in on God's economy. I'm trying to get you in on God's blessing. I'm really not trying to hurt you. I'm trying to help you. And trying to see what this early church did and how God blessed them in, a, in amazing ways because of their giving. There's a man named William who at 16 years of age left home. All he owned was in a little bundle that he carried in a sack. And his trade, he thought he had an idea for, was making soap. He hooked up with a riverboat captain who said, Son, someone's going to be the leading soap maker in New York, and it might as well be you. Be a good man. Give your heart to Jesus Christ. Pay the Lord all that belongs to Him. Make good soap and give a full pound. Well, he got a job at a soap-making company, began to tithe on his income, worked his way up through the company, became a partner, and eventually became the sole owner. And he began by giving 10% of the profits right off the top to God, then 20%, then 30%, then 40%. And at his death, he was giving 50% of the profits of the company to God. You may have heard of William. It was William Colgate. The Colgate Company. Henry Crowell was the autocrat of the breakfast table. He contracted tuberculosis as a boy and he was unable to finish school, but he, held D. L., he heard D.L. Moody preach. And his heart was stirred in him and he, he said, Lord, I'm not called to preach, but I can be a successful businessman and I can give generously to the work of the Lord. He brought an old rundown mill in Ravenna, Ohio. And in 10 years, the Quaker Oats had become a household name. He started by giving 10% of his 
income to God. And he increased that yearly until he was giving 70% to God. And he maintained that for 40 years. Those men possessed a special gift of giving. Those of you who have businesses, and, and, and I pray for God to prosper the businesses. Why? Because you can give generously to the work of God. And allow God to use you to be a blessing in the work of God. Definition of someone who has the gift of giving is the, someone who has the ability to prosper financially and give liberally to the work of God. Someone has the ability to prosper financially and give liberally to the work of God. Now listen, that, that doesn't mean that, that, well, I don't have the gift of giving, so I don't have to give anything. Uh, so I'm going to be further from the truth. Everybody is to give God what's rightfully His, and that's the tithe that belongs to God. And that goes to Him. And every believer ought to exercise that and, and take that. But the Bible says that grace goes beyond what the law would require. And these folks knew what the law required, but they went above and beyond that. Why? Because now grace, and grace always does more than the law. When Jesus came on the scene, He preached a sermon on the mount. He said, well, you've heard it said by them of old time. And He would say, He said, but I say unto you, and did Jesus raise the standard higher? Or did He put it lower? Oh, He always raised it higher. And so grace always does more than what law would do and what requirement would do. Love always exceeds the law. Most of you heard of the J.C. Penney Company. Do you know what the C stood for in J.C. Penney? His first name was James. The C stood for cash. James Cash Penney. Because he ended up, by the way, he ended up, he didn't believe in credit. That's why he got the name Cash, James Cash Penny. He ended up at the end of his life, he was living on 10% and giving God 90%. Seems to me when Penny's got away from that idea, they went down pretty fast, didn't they? God gives the gift of, pe gift of giving to people who he knows he can trust to be a conduit through which that money will flow to the work of God. You've heard me, you heard me do that, that prayer before where you, where you pray and God gives and then you go and you wake the guy up in the first row and you give it to him. And you go back and you pray and God gives it to you and you go over and give it to this guy in the front row. You go back, and you pray, and God gives it to you, and you say, and all of a sudden it dries up. What happened? That's one that for me. God wanted it to flow through me. And God will take care of me if I just let it flow through me. You know, when you have the grace of giving and God is blessing your, your life, you know what you do? You just want Him to give through you. You just want Him to give through you. The attitude of the river, not the reservoir. Where it flows through you, not just collecting it. We give. Church, church took care of their needs. And by the way, if, if everybody in a church... Listen carefully. If everybody in the church just gave God his 10%, the church would have all its needs met, and, and the church would be looking for missionaries to support. They'd be, they'd be desiring and trying to find... We wouldn't have to take calls from missionaries we do every week and say, I'm sorry, we're not able to take more missionaries on. We'd be calling the mission board and saying, you got anybody we can support? after we revived them from them passing out. But that's, that's, what, that's what it would take. They say only about three out of every ten believers in a church tithe. This early church was not that way. They had a great expression of giving. There's a great, great togetherness 
in the church because of giving. A great, the, the expression of their harmony was seen in their salvation, it was seen in their giving, and then lastly, it was seen in their witnessing. Again, in verse 33, with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Verse 33, they, they started with just 120 in the upper room. And it grew in a few months, and some, depending on which historian you want to believe, anywhere from 60,000 to 100,000 believers in six months to a year's time. That's pretty good from 120 to 60,000 or 100,000. That's unbelievable. Great power upon their witnessing. But it took that participation. It took the harmony. It took, it took everybody on the same page. And they, these were the ones who were closest. And these are the ones who heard the words of Jesus of Acts 1.8 when He said, You're going to be witnesses unto Me in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria, and in the uttermost parts of the earth. They heard those words with their ears. And now they get to carry that out. In fact, when they accuse the apostles earlier or later on in Acts, they say, these that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. They just were amazed at the, the, the impact that they had on the Word. Last night during the testimony time, how many times did we hear over and over again uh, that, well, I was home and I heard a knock on my door. Whether it was Mrs. Rock leading uh, Carol to the Lord. Or whether it's a bus captain saying, ride our bus this Sunday. It was everybody together out getting the gospel to people. It was amazing how many folks testified of how they got saved at Bible Baptist Church. And they're all out, listen, they're out serving the Lord somewhere. Some are still here and some are scattered around. But, but they got here. And how did they get here? Because there was a oneness, there was a harmony of let's get the gospel out. Let's get the gospel out. Let's witness for Christ. Let's get people saved. And that's what the early church did in chapter 5 and verse number 42. The last verse of chapter 5. Notice what the Bible says. And daily in the temple and in every house they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. In the temple and in every house, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Look at Acts chapter 8 and verse number 1. The Bible says Saul was consenting unto his death, and at that time there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. They all begin to scatter throughout Judea and Samaria. Isn't that what Jesus said to do? You'll be witness unto me in Jerusalem, and Judea, and Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. Now they're obeying what Jesus told them to do. Person to person, door to door, whatever you want to call it, but be preach the gospel to every creature. Be a creature reacher. Okay? And give the gospel to everyone. That's our, that's our, that's our responsibility. That's, listen, that's what a church is existing for. We're not just a club where we come and, you know, we, we, we could put, the, you know, instead of Bible Baptist, you'd put the moose out there or the elk. And we just come together to have a good time and have fellowship together. No, 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 that's not a church. A church has to be reaching people. A church has to be getting the gospel out. A church has to be preaching the Word of God. And so a church is to impact their community for Jesus Christ. That's why there's a bus ministry. That's why there's an RU ministry. That's why there's Sunday school classes. That's why there's a missions program. That's why there's big days. I heard people testify last night about the, the dinner day and, and the turkey dinner Sunday and how God used that to get them and to reach them. That's why we have those days. And that's why we have to use it to, to witness and get the gospel out to every creature. And that's where we come together as one and say we understand our focus. We understand our purpose. And listen, that is explain the difference in Sunday school about the evangelistic church versus what's called a soul winning church. An evangelistic church is we just try to bring lost people in and let the pastor preach salvation and get them down the aisle to get them saved. But a soul winning church is where 
you're scattered out. And this is what the New Testament church was, where you scatter out from here. We all leave from here with, one, with, with a purpose on our mind. I want to give the gospel to somebody this week. I want to try and get somebody saved this week. And then I can bring them with me to church next week. And then I can bring them down the aisle to make their profession of faith. And they can get baptized. You see, that's, that's, that's going out and bringing them in. And the pastor doesn't just preach salvation every Sunday morning. And, and, and you, you, because you're doing the work of the ministry. That's for everybody. And so that you, you see, listen, there was harmony here because they all understood they're all supposed to be doing this. They're all supposed to be witnessing. They're all supposed to be telling folks about Jesus. I want us to be a church of one heart and one soul. They were all, notice what it said back in chapter 4 in verse number 32. The multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. One heart and one soul. That's the way we ought to be. That's harmony in the church. And they, we do that by sharing the same belief in the same Savior. We do that by sharing and believing in giving to the work of God. And we do that by witnessing, by giving the gospel to every creature. Let's, let's, we're Bible Baptists but there's nothing wrong with being Harmony Baptist. But let's not be like that Harmony Baptist we heard about at the beginning. Let's, by God's grace, I'm praying He'll allow us to, to, to keep on going and stay on track for another 60 years or until He comes again. Just want to be found faithful in, in one purpose, in one accord, by His grace. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, take the truth now this morning. Lord, thank you for your word, and thank you for this early church in the book of Acts. And thank you for your blessing upon them. Thank you, Lord, for the harmony that we see in the oneness, the sameness, the, the, the seamlessness that this church seemed to have. And Lord, I pray that as we look at their expressions of that harmony and the fact that they all believed in the Savior. They were saved. They all desired to give and to, to, to give generously and graciously to take care of needs. Father, that they were witnessing. They were giving the gospel out on a daily basis. And you were adding to their church daily such as should be saved. Father, give us that harmony right here at Bible Baptist Church. May we continue to be what we should be and do what you've called us to do. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed this morning. I'm going to finish the prayer in just a moment. But I wonder how many folks in this room this morning would say, Pastor, you, you mentioned how the very first thing they had was they all believed in Jesus. They all had a common salvation. And I wonder how many here this morning would say, Pastor, there's a time in my life when I knew I was a sinner and I knew I needed a Savior. And Jesus was the Savior I needed. And I called on Jesus and I asked Him to be my Savior. And Pastor, this morning, I know that I'm saved. Here's my hand as a testimony. Would you slip it up for a moment and say, Pastor, I know that I'm saved today. I know Christ is my Savior. All right, you may put it down. You hear this morning would say, Preacher, I'm not sure about that. I didn't know. You may be here this morning and say, I, I didn't realize anybody could be sure. I don't know there's ever been a time when I've personally asked Christ to be my Savior. Well, I've known about Jesus, and you may know about Him and what He's done, but you never personally have trusted Him. Would you allow me to pray for you this morning? I'll not embarrass you, and I'll call you out, but I'll certainly pray for you. Would you slip your hand up right now and say, Pastor, pray for me. I'm not sure of my salvation. Thank you. There's someone else you couldn't raise your hand the first time, but you'd slip it up now. Just slip it up and put it back down. I'll see it. Say, Pastor, pray for me this morning. All right. The message was to believers today. Harmony. The expression of their salvation, the expression of their giving, the expression of their witnessing. I wonder how many folks here this morning would say, Preacher, God spoke to my heart today. At some point in the message, you were going through that, the Spirit of God just touched my heart. And the Lord dealt with me about something in my life today. And Pastor, I appreciate you praying for me. Would you slip your hand up and say, Pastor, pray for me this morning? God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. 
In a moment, I'm going to pray and we're going to have our invitation. If you're here today and you've never received Christ your Savior, then when we pray, others will be coming to the altar just to pray. Why don't you slip out from your seat? Meet me here at the front. We have people who have been trained. They'll take you a Bible and they'll, they'll show you from the Bible how you can know you're on your way to heaven. If you're here today and you've been saved and you've never been scripturally baptized, maybe you ought to be like Warner over here and say, I need to be obedient and be baptized today. If you're saved and you're scripturally baptized and you believe this ought to church, the kind of church you ought to belong to, then you come and say, we want to unite membership here. This is where we want to serve. And we'd welcome you into the fellowship of our church. Christian, you just want to come and bow the knee to the Lord for what he's spoken to your heart about. Then the altar is open for you this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to our hearts today. Thank you for these hands that have been uplifted and Lord, I simply would ask you to help each individual to do what you're telling them to do in their heart. That no one would be disobedient to you this morning. But that your will would be accomplished in each one of our lives. And the decisions that you desire we make. The things that you've touched upon in our hearts. We would respond to you this morning. And bow the knee to you at the altar. Lord, I pray any in the room that needs to receive Christ as their Savior. May they come and let someone show them how they can receive the gift of God, which is eternal life. May your will be done now in every heart and life, and I'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, your eyes closed, stand to your feet if you would, please. As you stand, the pianist will play. As she plays, Bob will sing her invitation hymn. God has spoken to your heart. Respond to him this morning, will you please? Oh, soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior, and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face And the things of earth will grow strangely dim In the light of his glory and grace Through death into life everlasting He passed and we follow Impair over us, sin no more has dominion. For more than conquerors we are. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the peace. of his glory and grace his word shall not fail you he promised believe him and all will be well then go to a world that is dying his perfect salvation to tell turn your eyes upon Jesus look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace
seated for a minute if you would please appreciate your attention this morning as i mentioned earlier we're glad to have warner ross coming this morning warner stand up for us big guy all right six years of age and uh no he's five. Oh wow when when do you turn six when's your birthday october all right almost six and uh he's received jesus christ as his savior and would like to follow the lord in baptism this morning god bless you warner that's great congratulations that's good um brother chris you and warner you follow brother bob downstairs and they'll get you get you ready for baptism all right and we're also glad to have coming this morning xavier and felicia perrick and uh they're coming for church membership this morning both have been saved and scripturally baptized and you can stand on up and uh great to have them coming all those in favor of welcoming them into the fellowship of our church, let it be known by a hearty eye Aye. and opposed by like sign. God bless you. That's great. When we come up from baptism, we'll have you come to the back so folks can greet you on the way out, all right? And uh, delighted to have this couple here. Um, uh, God's going to do some great things with this couple. And uh, as, I, as we prayed together up here at the altar, I, uh, they're, they're probably here for a short time they're going to be sent somewhere god's got plans for them i believe and uh and i i don't want i don't want to i don't want that but i want what god wants and the the greatness of a church is not by how many it seats but by how many it sends and uh, i want to be a help and encouragement to this couple while they're here and uh, help equip them for whatever it is god has for them to do but I'm delighted God sent them our way. And uh, they've already been a blessing to us, and we hope we'll be a blessing to you folks in the days ahead. All right, God bless you. You can be seated. All right, Brother Bob's going to lead you in some songs, and then uh, we'll prepare to baptize Warner. All right, let's start with number 302 together. 302. Oh, it is wonderful to be a Christian. Oh, it's wonderful. Be God's child. Let's sing that first together. Life has purpose now and never had before. There is meaning to each day and even more. For a joy and peace I can't explain is mine. Since I found new life in Christ, my Lord divine. Sing it now. Oh, it is wonderful. Sing that second. I can go directly to the Lord in prayer. He has told me I may boldly enter there. And he listens as it promised as I plead. I find mercy there in grace for every day. Sing it out. To have your sins forgiven Oh, it is wonderful to be redeemed Justified forever reconciled Is it wonderful to be a Christian this morning? Amen Let's sing that last together And the hope of heaven's glories thrills me so And the hope of heaven's glories thrilled me so Where I Loosely hold I've eternal riches Better far than gold Oh it is wonderful To be a Christian Oh it is wonderful To be God's child Oh it is wonderful To have your sins forgiven Oh it is wonderful To be redeemed Justified forever Reconciled Hey, man, that's just a great, great song. I love it. Let's pick one of your favorites. Brother Pete? 411. 411. I have a message from the Lord. Hallelujah. The message unto you I give. Look and live. Let's sing that first together. 411. I have a message from the Lord. Hallelujah. Or 
recorded in his word, hallelujah, it is only let you look and live, look and live, my brother, live, look to Jesus now and live, it is recorded in his word, hallelujah, it is only that you look and live, amen, how about another favorite? Yes, ma'am. 91. 91. We'll go with raised hands just more than anything else around here. 91. What a day that will be. This is a good one. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. 91. We're here already? Already. Wow. <laughs> Warner's fast. up here if you want, Danny, if you want to get, there's probably not a whole lot to see there, is there? <laughs> they should ask. They should just ask. All right. This is Warner Ross, and Warner, upon a public profession of your faith in Jesus as your Savior, and in obedience to his command, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bearing the likeness of Jesus' death and raised in the likeness of his resurrection. And the servant said, Master, it has done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room.
about you'll have time to get your mug and take it to your car. They said need a few minutes yet till everything's ready for us to head through the line. So um, we'll have who's uh, who's going to let us know that it's ready to go. Do we have a signal? Go ahead. Well, yeah, Don, why don't you take care of that? There you go. Okay. Brother, uh, Brother Pete, Brother Bill, make sure you, you're there to hand the mugs out, would you please? And uh, if you need more, they're down in the conference room if you, if you run out. <clears throat> so I want you to have that. All right. Been a good morning. Good to be in the house of the Lord today. All right. Let's stand together. We'll have a word of prayer. Look forward to seeing you tonight. 6.30 for the evening service, but stay in uh, fellowship and eat with us if you can. We sure would enjoy that and appreciate that. And uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I could do that. We'll, uh, we'll have prayer to end the service. I'll also pray to bless the food so you can just head on in. Yes, sir? Why? I need, I need, I need... I need more explanation. <laughs> We've been doing this a long time. We should have it down a better science than that. Uh, no, no, no. I wouldn't think of it. <clears throat> okay. Well, I got by standing now. They'll just have to wait a minute, I guess. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll pray. We'll sing. We'll get our cups, and we'll see how they're doing, all right? Okay, let's pray together. Father, we thank you now for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us. And thank you, Father, for decisions made this morning for thee. Thank you, Lord, for Warner. I pray you put your hand on this young boy's life and uh, use him in a great way, God. Uh, help mom and dad to continue to bring him up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Uh, Lord, he's got a tender heart already. I pray you'll always keep that and desire to be a help and a blessing to others and that you'll use them in a great way. Thank you for Xavier and Felicia. I pray, God, that you'll guide them, direct them, and they'll uh, be used greatly by thee in their life. And, Father, we pray your blessing on our food now today. Thank you for the many hands that have prepared it and those who are getting things ready for us now. And, Lord, bless those who will stay afterwards and clean up and get things put back together. Thank you for all the labor that's gone into this weekend. And thank you for people who love you and serve you with their heart. And Father, we pray that you'll nourish us with the meal and that you'll bless our conversation over the food, that the things that's said would be pleasing in your sight. Lord, we love you. Thank you for the sweet spirit that's in this place today. I'm so glad that I'm saved. So glad that I'm part of a church family. Now, Lord, give us a good afternoon and bring us back this evening for the uh, evening services of the 60th anniversary weekend. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Let's sing it together. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. Join heads with Jesus as we travel this side. For I'm a part of the family, the family of God. Amen. You're dismissed. We'll see you tonight. We'll see you across the way.